Hello and welcome to Business 360. I'm Shireen Bhan. Here's a look at the headlines that we're tracking for you this evening. The stock markets, the nifty gains over 30 points. I see stocks lift the markets even as bank stocks drag today. More than 8% equity in Adani Power changes hands. Sources say the promoter entity is the likely seller through a block deal for nearly 9,000 crore rupees. A global fund is the likely buyer. Indigo co-founder Rakesh Gangwal and family sell around 5% stake in the airline. Sources say it's the third tranche of the sale, bringing the Gangwal's holding below 26%. A 150-day lock-in period prevents further dilution for now. Infosys inks a $1.6 billion deal with Liberty Global to expand the entertainment and connectivity platforms of the digital communication firm. The deal value could go up to $2.5 billion if the tenure is extended from five years to eight years. The cabinet approves 57,600 crore rupees package to implement electric bus service in 100 cities. The central government will spend 20,000 crore rupees. States will spend the remaining amount. The cabinet also extends the Digital India program with an initial outlay of around 15,000 crores. The promoters of Z Entertainment, Puneet Goenka and Zubash Chandra, are likely to move the Securities Appellate Tribunal against the SEBI order. Market regulator SEBI has barred the duo from taking any management position in the Z-Sony combined entity till SEBI's probe is complete. SEBI proposes sweeping changes to the voluntary delisting process. A new consultation paper proposes alternatives to the reverse book building process and reducing the threshold for the counter offer. The market regulator has called for public comments till the 4th of September. Doctors protest the government's order against prescribing Generic drugs. The Indian Medical Association says quality control of generic drugs is weak and could be detrimental to patients' health, comparing the move to running trains without tracks. Over 60 people are dead across Himachal Pradesh in Uttarakhand in the last three days due to heavy rains and landslides. Himachal Chief Minister says the state has suffered damages worth 10,000 crore rupees so far. The Supreme Court releases a handbook for judges listing stereotypical terms that should be actively avoided. The handbook has terms like adulterous, affair, ladylike, mistress, marriageable, age, among others. The Chief Justice says the handbook aims to assist the legal community in identifying, understanding and combating stereotypes about women. As always, first up, the day's trading action. The Lull Street staged a late recovery today. So we saw the Nifty coming off its intraday low and reclaiming the 19,450 mark. The Sensex finally closed 138 points higher. The Nifty Bank, though, continues to be under pressure, down 144 points. The Nifty IT index did lend some support. That closed higher by almost 180 points. So that was really the big picture as far as the markets are concerned. But let's talk about U.S. banks, including the likes of J.P. Morgan Chase. They could be staring at a possible rating downgrade. That's as per Fitch. Now, Fitch analysts told CNBC that one notch downgrade of the industry's score would force a re-evaluation on ratings for 70 banks. Remember, the ratings agency cut its assessment of the industry's health in June. So that's as far as Fitch on U.S. banks is concerned. Now, China has suspended publication of its youth jobless data after the release of weaker than expected factory and retail sales for the month of July. Officials say they need to review the methodology behind the closely watched benchmark. The country's central bank also unexpectedly cut a range of key interest rates in a bid to reignite growth. So trouble there on the macros as far as China is concerned. And more from China. JP Morgan has said that the country's residential property market could see a sharper than expected slump this year. This follows downbeat government sales and investment data for the sector. Analysts at the brokerage now expect China's residential sales value for fiscal 2023 to contract 10% compared with a 4% drop that was estimated earlier. From China to the UK where the headline inflation rate has cooled to 6.8%, However, the core consumer price index has remained unchanged. The UK government has attributed the decline to the fall in gas and electricity prices. But back home, the big story. More than 8% shareholding in Adani Power changed hands today. Sources say that the Adani promoters are the likely sellers through block deals worth 9,000 crore rupees. Nimesh is standing by with more details. Nimesh, plenty of action across the Adani group and today it's Adani Power 8% of equity exchanging hands. Do we know who the buyer is? 
Well, there's a large block in Adani Power today. Nearly 8% of the company's equity got, ch got changed hands at an average price of 280 rupees per share. Now, in terms of uh, seller, I understand the promoter entity was a seller in today's block. And in terms of a buyer, a single large global marquee fund was a buyer in today's block deal. Now, uh, the 8% equity at the current price is valued uh, close to a billion dollars. And uh, the promoter holding is close to 75%. But after today's uh, stake sale of 8%, that will fall down to nearly 68%. So, uh, in, in, a, in a large block in Rani Power, uh, nearly 8% equity got changed hands. And a single marquee investor, global investor was a buyer. And they've invested close to a billion dollars in Rani Power today via block deal. Okay, Nimesh, many thanks for joining us. Well, from one mega block deal to another, Indigo's co-founder Rakesh Gangwal and family have sold another 5% stake in the airline. Sources have told CNBC TV18 that this is the third tranche of the sale, which will bring the Gangwal's holding below 26%. Sonia standing by with more. Sonia, you know, the Gangwal's have made it clear that they do intend to bring their stake down in Indigo, and this is the third tranche in that endeavour. There was a large trade that took place this morning where 2 crore shares, uh, which is 5.1% equity, changed hands at a price of uh, 2,430 rupees. And this was worth almost 5,000 crores, so a fairly large deal taking place. Uh, there was a very strong response coming in from uh, global as well as domestic funds. So it is likely that the Gangwal family has sold part of their stake. And that has been received by a lot of global as well as domestic funds. Now, uh, the Gangwal family, this is the third tranche of selling. And, uh, you know, uh, after the selling that they've seen earlier, they had about 29.7% stake. And post-selling of this stake, they would be somewhere to the tune of around 25.7%, which is still almost 25,250 crores worth of stake that the Gangwal family has. So there is a bit of an overhang that perhaps, you know, there could be more promoter stake selling. But, and that could be the reason why the stock is under pressure. But the larger story here is the zooming business of Indigo. Indigo has about 80% market share in some of the monopolistic routes. It is the market leader in the space right now. The stock has surged almost 40% in the last six months. The earnings have been very, very strong. In fact, in the quarter gone by, it's been record high EBITDA and revenue for the company. And there are still many tailwinds, whether it's strong domestic traffic, whether it's, uh, you know, higher yields, lower crude prices. And there are many bulls on the street as well. So City, for example, raised their target price to 3 3,400 rupees, which is a big upside to the current market price, while Macquarie has an outperform with a target price of 2,950. Back to you. Okay, Sonia, many thanks for joining us. And uh, it is raining block deals. Shares of Relig have gained over 5% after we learned from sources that the Berman family has increased its stake in the company via block deal. Remember, the Berman family held 14% stake in Relig As of June, Relig Enterprises, which is a subsidiary of Relig Finvest, aims to raise 800 crore rupees through a qualified institutional placement. IT major Infosys announced a five-year agreement worth $1.6 billion with Liberty Global. Now, the deal aims to expand entertainment and connectivity platforms of the digital communications firm. According to an exchange filing, the deal can be extended to eight years, which will take the deal value to $2.5 billion. The current tenure is five years. The union cabinet has approved a 57,600 crore rupee package to implement electric bus services in 100 cities. Now, the service will be launched with 10,000 electric buses. The cabinet has also extended the Digital India program with an additional outlay of about 15,000 crore rupees. The program will aim to upskill over 5 lakh IT professionals. The cabinet has also approved seven multi tracking railway projects worth 32,500 crore rupees. Back to corporate news, Z promoters Puneet Goenka and Subhash Chandra are likely to move the Securities Appellate Tribunal or SAT against the market regulator's order. Remember, SEBI has barred the duo from taking any management position in the Z-Sony combined entity till SEBI's probe is complete. The market regulator says it will complete its investigation in the case of alleged siphoning of funds in eight months. SBFC Finance has made a stellar listing on Dalal Street. The company shares listed at 82 rupees a share, a premium for followers 44% over the IPO price. At closing, the stock price was over 60% higher than its IPO price. SBFC Finance's IPO was subscribed 70 times, led by robust demand from institutional investors. Well, the market regulator has proposed sweeping changes to the voluntary delisting yeah. process. A new consultation paper has proposed alternatives to the reverse book building process and reducing the threshold for the counter offer. Let's go across to Yash now. He's standing by with more details. Yash, take us through what is being proposed by SEBI. Well, as SEBI chairperson in the last board meeting said that SEBI does not like 
any abhimanyus in the market and that's uh, the context in which this particular proposal has come. Uh, some very crucial changes to the current voluntary delisting regulation. SEBI has sought stakeholder comments on these proposed changes by September 4th. The main focus for these changes have been four different segments of delisting process. First one on alternatives to the reverse book building process, then counter offer framework, uh, the third one determination of flow price and finally the last one on the review of reference date for the determination of flow price for the delisting. Let's get to the first and the most important one. SEBI has proposed an alternative mechanism to the reverse book building process which is the only delisting mechanism which currently exists. This alternate uh, mechanism would be delisting through a fixed price arrived as per the delisting regulations. Uh, what does this do? It reduces volatility, brings certainty on the delisting crisis and also helps the acquirer to arrange funds for the delisting process. The second one is on the reduced threshold for the counter offer for delisting after the first offer fails. Now, if the acquirer cannot acquire 90% of the shares in the company, then the delisting fails. The proposal is to reduce the threshold from 90% uh, for the counter delisting offer. The third change is on the eligibility criteria for coming out with a counter delisting offer in case the first one fails. SEBI says that a company can only bring out a counter offer if the bids received in the first offer is higher than two points. First one is the higher of difference between the acquirer shareholding and 75% and the second one is higher of 50% of the public shareholding. Currently, a counter offer for delisting can be brought irrespective of the bids that have been received in the first delisting attempt. Now, the next one, SEBI has proposed to consider date of board meeting for approving delisting as the reference date for determination of floor price instead of the current rule where the day of intimation to the stock exchanges on the board meeting is considered as the reference date. SEBI also proposed to bring out separate delisting regulations for investment holding companies under which transfer of shares in listed companies held by the IHC will be done to public shareholders. Also, cash payments to public shareholders of the IHC will be done against the investments in unlisted companies. This is to ensure that the delisting price for the investment holding company reflects its right intrinsic value. All right, Yash, appreciate you joining us. Uh, those are the proposed changes to the delisting norms that the market regulator has put on the table. We will head into a short break, but up next, doctors in India will no longer be able to prescribe generic drugs. We speak with Sharad Kumar Agarwal, National President of Indian Medical Association, on the implications of the decision when we return. The Supreme Court has released a handbook for judges that lists stereotypical terms that should be actively avoided. The handbook has terms like adulterous, affair, ladylike, mistress, marriageable age, among others. Kanishka is standing by with the details. Kanishka, take us through the contours of the handbook uh, and what is the Supreme Court hoping to do with this? Well, like you said, it's all about combating gender stereotypes and mitigating the use of language that enforces such stereotypes in not just judgments and the judicial decision-making process, but also in drafting of pleadings. To give you a few examples, the handbook suggests that words like prostitute or hooker be substituted with the phrase sex worker, or that uh, the phrase relationship outside of marriage be used instead of affair, or a non-marital child or a child whose parents were not married instead of bastard. Importantly, the handbook also acknowledges the current conversations around gender fluidity and suggests the use of sex assigned at birth instead of biological male or biological female. Similarly, there's an attempt to do away with some old tropes. So phrases like dutiful wife or obedient wife are to be replaced with just wife. Some redundancies in language that is commonly used in uh, courtrooms or judgments have also been pointed out. For instance, forcible rape is to be replaced with just rape. Most interestingly, the handbook also tries to ad address the debate uh, over whether a person who has been raped should be termed a survivor or a victim. It says, and I quote, 
An individual who has been affected by sexual violence may identify themselves as either a survivor or victim. Both terms are applicable unless the individual has expressed a preference, in which case the individual's preference should be respected. End court. Chief Justice of India, D.Y. Chandrachud, says that the handbook aims to assist judges and the legal community in identifying, understanding and combating stereotypes about women. In its introduction, the handbook explains that it is vital that judges not only avoid relying on stereotypes in their decision-making and writing, but also actively challenge and dispel harmful stereotypes. It goes on to say that if harmful stereotypes are relied on by judges, it can lead to a distortion of the objective and the impartial application of the law. However, CJ has also made it clear that the release of this handbook is by no means intended to criticize or cast doubt on past judgment. It is merely to show how stereotypes may be unwittingly employed. This handbook is a culmination of work that began during the COVID-19 pandemic. Kanishka, many thanks for joining us. And that is important and it is about time. Now, doctors in India are protesting against the National Medical Commission's new rules that have made it mandatory for doctors to prescribe generic drugs. The Indian Medical Association has raised concerns over the mandate, citing that quality control of generic drugs is weak in India and hence could be detrimental to a patient's health. In a letter, the doctors have compared the move to running trains without tracks. For more, let's go across now to speak with the IMA. Uh, the IMA has, as we pointed out, put out this letter uh, to the government. Joining me now is Sharad Kumar Agarwal, the National President of the Indian Medical Association. Dr. Agarwal, many thanks for joining us here on CNBC TV 18. Uh, you know, the IMA putting out a strongly worded letter against the rules that have now been prescribed by the National Medical Commission. But explain to the viewers what is the big concern that you have? Uh, because the government's contention or the National Medical Commission's contention is that this will bring down health care costs significantly, anywhere between 30 to 80 percent. But you're saying that this is in fact going to be bad for patient care. Uh, thank you for uh, uh, raising this issue. See, the point is the whether uh, just for the cost we are going to compromise with the life of the patients. The answer is no. The government, when the NMC is saying that uh, doctors should only prescribe the generic medicine, they should ensure, they should give the insurity that the quality of generic medicine should be at par with the branded medicine. They should ensure that the bioavailability of the medicine in the blood should be at par with as the branded medicine. That guarantee we want. We don't have any uh, problem in writing generic medicine or branded medicine or branded generic mm -hmm. medicine. The only concern is that the outcome, the, see, what they are saying, mm. they are saying that doctors has to write only a generic word or the component and that they are giving that right to a shopkeeper who probably don't understand the mm. pharmacology because all the chemist shop, they don't have 24 into 7 the pharmacist. They have the right to change the medicine and give any substitute. This is illogical. As per the rule in India, all the medicine has to be sale on the le le legitimate prescription of a registered medical practitioner. If NMC is uh, mm. prohibiting the RMPs from writing uh, other than generic medicine, then why the production of branded, so-called branded medicine is with there in India? And see, the other point is the mm. cost. We also agree with the government and we also understand that the spend should be decreased. But there are other means which government has done in the past also. They mm. have reduced their cap the rate of the stent in the cardiac, uh, uh, you know, cardiac event. So they, dis they are yeah. the only one who decide the MRP of so-called branded medicine. Why can't mm. they crash that MRP right. to the desirable rate? That is in their hand. They can very mm. well do this. And yeah. the other point, see so in Dr. India, a lot of companies, yeah. uh, in India, a lot of companies, no. they are uh, producing three kind of medicine under the name of branded the branded generic and the generic. And all these mm. three categories have a different rate. Now you tell me, if one mm. company, the same company is producing three kind of uh, salt medicine in three categories mm. with the different rate, mm. then if the quality is same, then why the rates are different? Why can't all these companies, yeah. they can produce only a single kind of medicine, which, is, which should be low in the rate, mm. MRP, and should be given the quality medicine to the patient? We want one nation, one right. drug, one price. Hmm. Uh, 
Uh, right. So you're, you're saying that the onus is on pharma companies to do away with this di distinction. Uh, but what about, uh, uh, you know, the prescribed uh, uh, penalties as far as violation is concerned? How concerned is the medical community with respect to that? Because it is uh, not just a warning. The government is also talking about the possibility of suspending license for serial offences. Uh, see, I don't understand what is very psyche. One side, they they get laurels, lot of laurel across the world because of these only doctors of India. So I don't think why they are, uh, you know, suspicioning their own doctors. Those doctors who sacrificed their life during COVID and brought the laurel to the country, now they are suspecting those doctors. It is absolutely a funny thing. If they have anything in their mind, they should have discussed with the IMA the execution part. This is absolutely, and we don't care of these penalties and all. Uh, see, we believe we are the law-abiding pupil. If somebody is doing an uh, unethical thing, he or she should be... Hmm. Right, that is uh, Sharad Kumar Agarwal there of the IMA uh, reacting... Uh, to the NMC's recommendations, which basically prescribe that uh, doctors only uh, prescribe generic medicines and not branded medicines. Uh, you know, Dr. Agarwal, I wanted to come back to you. You said that there was no consultation with the IMA on the execution of this. But since the time the recommendations have been put out and, uh, uh, you know, uh, we have seen the medical fraternity uh, respond uh, with uh, criticism and skepticism, has there been any consultation since then with the government? Have you heard from the government? Uh, no, we, we wrote a letter to the government uh, just two days back and till now we have not uh, got any call and I am sure that government is sensitive. They will understand the issue. Uh, it is not a matter of that IMA is opposing hmm. or doctors are opposing. It is a matter of the what is the right thing to be done. So our approach is not that uh, yeah. because we have been not consulted, that is why we are uh, opposing. No, absolutely this is not the point. Right. Our point is that what to be done, what is it justified? It will be a disastrous for the country, yeah. for the healthcare system of the country. That is why we are uh, opposing and recommending and requesting government to please have a look on that. If they want, they can discuss with us. We volunteer ourselves, but they have to think over this. These, these yeah. law uh, will not go very long. All right, uh, sir, we will leave it there. Uh, that is the IMA saying that uh, uh, the recommendations of the National Medical Commission saying that doctors only prescribe generic drugs is ill-conceived, ill-thought through and must be reviewed. With that, it is time for us to wrap up this edition of Business 360. Thanks very much for watching. Do stay tuned to CNBC TV 18. The news will continue when we return after this short break.